We all saw this video in February. This massive crash, smoke and fire from a derailment of a tanker train in Ohio. It brought national attention to train safety, but the most common problem with transporting hazardous materials is on the roads mm -hmm. where you and your family drive every day. CBS News found in the past decade, for every one hazmat incident involving a train, there were 33 involving big rigs on a highway. But as national investigative correspondent Stephen Stock shows us, there are road-tested safety solutions. Nobody wants an unsafe driver on the road. Inside this big rig, the driver's cab looks more like a control center full of technology. Turning on my turn signal. Cameras monitoring the driver, lane assistance, computer assisted navigation, satellite tracking, rollover prevention, and forward facing radar that trips automatic braking if anything gets too close. What this will do as soon as it picks up the traffic in front of me, I get a yellow signal that there's a, something on the side of me. Jackie Wegener's been driving big rigs for more than a decade. I think it's firmly changing the way that truck driving is, is done. She took us on the road near Boston to show us how all this technology works. And then now it shows you where there is a vehicle in front of me traveling at 64 miles per hour. It's 300 and some feet away, and that's 4.2 seconds ahead of me. And within seconds, everything can go wrong. Stakes are even higher, hauling hazardous materials. There's over 2 million shipments of hazmat every day in the United States of America. And most of that stuff is moving by highway. Bob Richard was deputy administrator for hazardous materials at the U.S. Department of Transportation. And most of the incidents involve flammable liquids, um, primarily uh, combustible liquids for fuel oil, for homes, home heating. And guess what the number one item is? Paint. Hazmat accidents involving big rigs in the last decade jumped 155%. The cause in almost one out of every five crashes, drivers. We're right on the money there because um, human error is the biggest contributing factor. If you look at all the data that's published by the agency, you can see that. And when I was there, that was a concern. And it's probably the most challenging th thing to deal with. But for decades, safety technology has moved at a faster pace than policy. Almost three decades ago, the National Transportation Safety Board started recommending the adoption of these automated safety systems to save lives. Recommended in 1995 after five people died in a crash near Little Rock in heavy fog. Recommended to Congress in 2001, and again following another deadly crash in Wisconsin in 2005. And just this year, the NTSB's top 10 most wanted safety recommendations again target safety technology in trucks. And yet in spite of all of these recommendations, few of these safety systems have been required by the federal government. Uh, a collision warning system that's part of a collision avoidance system would have warned the driver. The latest recommendation came after an accident outside Phoenix. In its investigative report, the NTSB faulted the driver for failing to avoid a chain reaction crash where four people died. The NTSB said automatic safety systems could have prevented the crash, which begs the question we put to U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Why doesn't DOT require that in every truck out on the road? Well, there's a lot of new technology coming online that has a lot of promise. Three years ago, DOT gave Virginia Tech researchers a $7.5 million grant to develop plans to integrate these systems safely into trucks. But Buttigieg says even more time is needed. Sometimes the, the promises of, of these technologies, uh, they, they need to be checked out, especially when you look at this advanced driver assistance systems. We've improved dramatically utilizing these systems. Boyle Transportation near Boston didn't wait for government regulations. They started phasing in different safety systems more than 20 years ago. Those systems are now in all of its trucks. We haven't had a preventable, recordable accident since the year 2019. And the one prior to that was in 2014. You should watch the side view camera. Safety manager Mike Lasco showed us video from one of their trucks. Now this red icon here indicates that roll stability is kicked on and it's kicked on to the most severe level, where basically it is taking control away from the driver for braking, steering and everything and it's acting automatically. But I mean, look how close this is to this, Absolutely. the other vehicle. Right now, our trailer began to come around, roll stability kicked on and snapped it back into place. Right, so that saved a life right there. Lasco admits the cost of this technology may be its biggest limitation. They spent between 10 and $20,000 per truck 
putting this technology in every tractor cab they own. You have a lot of what I call mom and pop trucking. You know, you could have one, one guy who owns his own truck. So is he gonna be able to economically go out and, and refit his truck with all those systems? Probably not feasible. I feel safer as a driver having it on board. But for drivers like Wegner, the cost is worth it. She says she's glad she now has a computer co-pilot with her on the road. Why do you think people should care? Human life is important and valuable regardless of anything else, and that's the bottom line. Critics say it's taking too long to implement these safety systems. Even the agency that sets the rules for trucks, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, in a 2017 report estimated that fully implementing this technology could prevent 11,000 crashes every year. I'm Stephen Stock. In California, the number of hazmat incidents on roads have increased by 60% in the wow. last decade. That adds up to more than $24 million in damages. Definitely an issue to take a closer look at.